Hello and welcome back to Mind of Success. I'm your host, Moni Millares, a Mexican-British living in Asia. I work in fintech and build digital banks from scratch. In my years in the industry, I've realized most of us are in a vulnerable financial position. However, building a business can be a catalyst for change. So I created this podcast. It's about business stories we do not talk about. I chat with entrepreneurs, CEOs, and experts about their journeys, struggles, and lessons to extract gems of wisdom and practical tools so that we can thrive and create the impact we want. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Success. Today, we have a very interesting topic as usual, <laughs> but this one is different. Uh, we have Andres Friedman today with us. He is the co-founder and CEO of Solfume. And what they do is basically they do distributed solar energy. You're like, what, what is that? Well, <laughs> the world is changing. The world is suffering like nature needs us. And basically what Andres and his co-founders and his company does is he's giving us a solution as consumers to have a proper impact in solving the environmental problem that we have today. That's why I'm very excited to have Andres in the show today. So Andres, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Maya. Very, very excited and looking forward to, uh, to our chat. Thank today. you, likewise. So like I said at the beginning, except I do believe that the world as Mother Earth is suffering. Uh, but of course, I'm just a consumer that tries to do her best in not consuming a lot of clothes, you know, doing my recycling, consuming less meat, like, but I am not an expert in the topic. So can you start by telling us what are those facts that we should know that say, hey guys, the world is in pain. We need to do something to help mm -hmm. basically make a difference. Good, that's a great, a great way to start uh, money. And, and uh, I'm, I'm also relatively new in the space. We started Solfium a year ago. So I've been following this, this topic as a regular consumer before, I guess, like you as a regular person. And I think, um, I think over the last few years, there's been an acceleration of what call it of, of, of awareness of, of consciousness about our, our impact. I would say, you know, even in, in the corporate world, which used to, uh, if you paint it on a, on a big brush, uh, you know, the co corporate world used to be uh, seeing all environmental issues as something that, that needed to be dealt with to mitigate, you know, risks, to mitigate PR um, issues, but not necessarily as front and center in, in, in their strategy. And so in that environment and, and, and sort of across um, society, I'm seeing a big change where people, you know, across all walks and, and shapes of life are now seeing the, the impact. And I think there's a, a higher level of of awareness and consciousness that we need to do something different, and that the the change need, needs to start with with us because uh, you know you we are all one individual consumers, but usually in in society when when there's a change in and there's a wave and and there is a mindset change, it usually happens uh, fairly quickly, maybe not as quickly as we need, but in general, like in the grand scheme of things, once we change a habit. We change it for good and, and other people start seeing it and, and there is a sort of implicit pressure for other people to be like, hey, you know, why are you not doing this or, or that? So um, I think it's I think the change is happening, basically. And uh, and what we need to do is to accelerate that change. Um, and so that's that's what we are focusing on. And we'll talk more about it. But that's sort of the starting point is how do we help people, um, you know, um, make that change right and become have a more sustainable lifestyle. Yes, I love that word, sustainable lifestyle. Um, you just said two really good things, that it's like whenever we need to have a change in mindset and we change our habits. What is your personal story? Like you used to work in corporate and then now you're like in a startup doing sustainable energy. What was mm -hmm. that change in mindset that happened? And it's like, oh, I need to do this. 
I uh, it, it 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 didn't happen overnight, but I'll, I'll tell you briefly, and I will I will also talk about some of the uh, the bad things that I was doing before. Maybe uh, that's always a good way to to start. Um, so I was born and raised in in, in Uruguay, and I came to uh, to Canada um, uh, to to go to university. Had a good opportunity there, and then just loved loved the the opportunity and the uh, the openness and and uh, and yeah, the, 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 everything that Canada had to offer, and, and basically uh, basically stayed here, became a a permanent immigrant, if you will, um, and uh, yeah, have been in Canada since. I then worked a bit in in Mexico, as you know, in my corporate career, I worked in Mexico, I worked in in Germany, uh, then back to back to Canada, and most of my career was in aerospace. I started in General Electric, but then uh, most of my career was at a Canadian company called Bombardier. Um, and those very, very uh, exciting opportunities professionally, but it was after a certain time, I started uh, feeling that there was something else and, and, and something different that I could that I could do. And as, as I was saying, that didn't happen overnight. I always um, uh, reflect on how I changed personally on my on, on my perspective. And I was saying on that sustainability lifestyle, I, 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 I do consider that I'm not, you know, I'm not at the forefront. I was never, you know, those people that were out out there and yeah. and definitely definitely not not protesting or marching but even you know I wasn't uh, sort of at the forefront of, of looking at uh, adopting new either new technologies or new uh, new ways of of buying or doing things I, I never um, you know I was never a pioneer in that I was almost like that second follower sort of in yeah. a bit of uh, with a bit of shame saying oh, oh oh I need to do this and why didn't I do it earlier kind of thing um, but but yeah I, I reflect on how uh, you know, back in the day growing up, I mean, in, in, in my country, we didn't have the habit of, of recycling, right? Like the trash was just trash. And, you know, I guess we are, we were lucky to be in a country that is uh, big uh, uh, relative to the small size of the population. We are a small country, but, but, uh, but we're not a dense, uh, we're a very lowly dense uh, population with a lot of nature. And so, you know, we weren't, we weren't as conscious. And I remember when I first moved to Canada, it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what is this whole thing of recycling and separating yeah. you know, garbage and, and reusing? And I even remember sort of that first campaign at my university at McGill, this was 20 years ago, yes. and they were talking a, a bit more. Uh, I'm, I'm rounding down rather than rounding up um, and they were talking about you know the whole reduce reuse and, and recycle and for me it's like wow new, completely new concept you know? and so you know I, I guess all that to say I've always come in uh, a bit a bit uh, behind on on this and uh, there's been a lot of uh, change in, in in Uruguay and in Latin America we, we chatted briefly about that even even in Mexico today there's a level of awareness and, and consciousness that didn't exist even 10 years ago when I was living there I agree. so um, so it's 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 happening, and I guess um, what I found with Solfium was an opportunity to really do do something that makes a, that makes a difference in this in this field. Uh, energy consumption is a huge part, obviously, of our environmental footprint. Uh, in some countries, we're luckier than others. In in the province of Quebec, for example, where I live within Canada, there's a, a tremendous hydro energy um, resources. That, that is in itself, uh, obviously hydro electricity is renewable, is quite green, not as green as solar, uh, but quite, quite, uh, quite green. And, um, and so, you know, we were, we were, we're lucky, but other countries, as you know, Mexico and most of Latin American countries and, and many other countries in the world rely for on fossil fuels for, you know, yeah. 80 or, or more percent of their, uh, you know, energy mix, their, the electricity that comes from the grid is is still very dependent on fossil fuels. So those are the countries where we think the impact is highest uh, on on adopting solar. And the good news is, in many of these countries, you know, the the sun is, is quite present. Yes. Uh, so it, it's sort of, I guess, Mother Nature sort of gave us that that balance where if you don't have uh, hydro or other sort of natural big sources of renewables, uh, you've got a lot of sun. So uh, so Mexico and Latin America generally have a lot of a lot of sun, and and so does uh, India and and, and Australia and many other yeah. places in in Asia as well. So uh, so you know, it's 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 the opportunities there. We just need to bring uh, the bring the sun closer to uh, to people. So that's a bit uh, a bit our, our play of words in in Solf. We say the sun has never been closer because all our focus and and our, our uh, raison d'être, our, our 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 reason for for existing is really to help people adopt solar energy to make it easier for people. Yeah. That's really the uh, the concept. 
I love it. Bring the sun closer to people. That even make it sounds like now that you're, <laughs> like you're having a coffee, it kind of like it it gives yes, that feeling cozy. of warmth. Exactly. Warm. It is cozy. It's warm. It's like bring the sun closer to people. That's it. It's, That's it's, it. It's uh, it's smart smart sunbathing. It's like the sun <laughs> is there. Let's let's not just sunbathe. Let's do something more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm very I'm very keen to know your story as an entrepreneur and the ups and the downs and how you started. But before we go into that, for everyone listening, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, sustainable energy and the company did the other. But uh, can you tell us what the product is? Because I think it's a yeah. really good product. In, and just before oh, you go into that, I'll summarize it's that, like, yeah. yeah, in fintech, we were like, hey, banking is broken. Customer experience is broken. There's like so many processes. It's difficult to onboard customers. It's expensive. This, the other, and that's how the fintech industry kind of emerged right. many years ago. To when we were talking, yes, a, to disrupt a traditional, the, industry. a traditional industry. And when we were talking, and you were like, "Hey, this is a product." Like all I heard all the time was like, "Oh, it's exactly the same story, but just applied in a different industry, in a different context." Yeah, yeah, yeah which is fascinating. So, yeah, what's your product as such? Yeah. Good. I, th I think you're right. I mean, we were discussing this uh, when we uh, when we first uh, met uh, virtually. I mean, the, the the there's a lot of similarities uh, in 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 the industry. We saw a big opportunity in in the uh, distributed generation space because and, and maybe for for everyone uh, everyone that's listening that's not familiar, the term uh, of distributed generation applies for. Um, projects that are for self-consumption, basically. So there's two, if we were to simplify, the industry is, is divided in two. There's the utility scale projects, which are um, you know, large solar parks or wind or wind farms, whether it's onshore or offshore, et cetera, but basically projects that are tied to the grid and, and that are feeding basically uh, uh, the electricity yeah, through, the, through yes. the grid and through, through uh, the existing network of transmission and distribution. Distributed generation by, by, by definition is when you're generating in a distributed fashion, so not in a large uh, location, but all across. And it goes anywhere from as small as an individual home. So anyone that has solar panels in their home for their own consumption, that's distributed generation. But it goes as far as, you know, large industrial projects where it's, again, it's the company or the massive manufacturing plant has, you know, potentially thousands of, of solar panels. But again, it's for their own consumption. So it's still considered distributed generation. Different countries have different thresholds for what they call uh, distributed generation beyond X number of kilowatts, it, it, it jumps into sort of the larger um, uh, projects, but, but basically that's the concept. And if we exclude sort of the very large projects, what we saw is at the end of the day, the opportunity to bring solar to, um, to, to consumers, okay, to so homes and small businesses. And um, the nature of that industry is that it's very fragmented. I mean, there's thousands and, and millions of small consumers. Um, so it, it requires more of a B2C model, a, a mindset of how do you reach an individual consumer uh, versus a, a B2B business, which yeah. you're, when you're selling to large, uh, whether it's a utility company or large companies that obviously have you know, in a massive manufacturing plant, you'll have a director of maintenance. You have people that are very, you know, tech savvy and can and can basically assess their energy needs, et cetera, et cetera. An individual consumer does not have that that uh, skill set, know how, bandwidth to to do research no. and become an expert in no. in solar systems. So we needed to make the solution easy. Maybe to do a quick uh, parenthesis and then. Um, I always try to make a short answer, then I, I go on, on tangents. But um, one important consideration of why we think distributed generation needs to play a bigger role and needs to accelerate is because all projections show when we talk about net zero, when we talk about the targets from both countries and, and companies, and we'll talk about companies after, uh, but uh, countries that are saying, hey, we want to, you know, back to our earlier conversation, we want to help our, our society, our country transition towards a more, a more sustainable, uh, you know, system, et cetera. Um, there's targets and there's sort of incentives and plans, but the, the reality, we look at any, all the analysis that looks at our trajectory, we are far from achieving net, net zero. So there was one particular study from the, um, um, 
uh, IEA, uh, uh, the International Energy Agency, and then was complemented by some analysis from The Economist, for example, which for, for me at least, it brought it to, to life. And the study basically said that we needed to uh, have a chance basically to get back on the trajectory and achieve net zero. Um, we needed to um, uh, increase, basically cut all off, uh, all new oil and gas projects as of 2021, which we know hasn't happened for different yeah. reasons. And yeah. now we're in a particular um, particular uh, difficult context, uh, obviously yeah. that that is changing and, 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 and that is, is very explainable. Uh, but again, big picture, we needed to cut off oil and gas and quadruple wind and solar power. When you say quadruple, it sounds like, oh, okay, it's like a lot, but how much is really, well, it's, it's a lot. It's and a lot, The analysis yeah. from The Economist showed that that's the equivalent of, think of the largest solar park that exists in the world, not, not distributed, not rooftop solar, not your no. house. The largest the solar largest. park that exists in the world, the ones you see in, in you know, the World Economic Forum videos or whatever, that is like massive in whatever desert you think of, yeah. that solar park needs to be replicated every single day <laughs> until 2030, every single day. So think of, 3,365 3, oh, wow. days in the year, every single day we need to replicate that. It's absolutely massive. That's insane. It's, it, it's, 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 it's not, uh, it's, it would be very difficult to achieve, uh, let's yes. say, and it's not happening. We're not adding a mega solar park every day. No. So that's why we think a bigger part of the solution needs to be rooftop solar because in these large projects, there's a lot there of places in the earth where you can do it, yeah. but many countries don't have that land available or would need to use that land that could be used for something else. Yeah. So that's why we think, uh, you know, there's no opportunity cost to put something. The roofs are already there in all our homes and in all our companies. So it, it's a, it's, if you, if we think about it sort of simplistically, it's like, it's a no brainer. Um, yeah. But then the challenge is, well, how do you, how do you reach millions of consumers and tell them, Hey, put solar panels in your roof. So that's that's then the challenge of how do you bring down this concept to to to, to massify it, if I use in proper yeah. English, to make it accessible to, to everyone. So that's our starting point with Solfi. This is the long preamble long, to tell yeah. you how, what we do. Yeah, because that's, I was that's like, our starting point. Yeah, because I'll, I'll interrupt before you tell us what you do. What you do is thank basically <laughs> a solution. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's You have a solution that basically uses an app it makes it uses a drone it makes it yes. very uh financial inclusive as well and then it's just like simple to use while you have that's the benefits it. of having uh sustainable energy at home that's it that's it. that's what we do in in, in ceremony it's it's uh using technology to help accelerate the adoption of, of solar. It's making the customer journey, and back to the analogy with, uh, with the fintech and banking, it's making the customer journey easy, simple, frictionless, uh, and, and therefore accessible to, uh, to everyone. Everyone can download the app. It's in, for our app was conceived to how do we make it as easy as taking an Uber? When you take an Uber, you just need to download the app and say, I want to go here. And the rest, it's like, oh, okay, I know how much it's going to cost me. I know when the, the driver arrives. I know if he's a good or he or she's a good or bad driver, yeah. etc. I know the traffic, etc. This is the same thing. You download the app. You say how much you pay per electricity per month, and the algorithm gives you an instant quote, and you do the whole interaction. You chat uh, with the installer. We assign you the installer. We, you chat with the installer, ask questions. We use a drone to assess your roof. Um, finalize the, the proposal, schedule the installation, give you integrating FinTech into our solution, obviously giving you payment platforms and financing options in the app and post-installation, giving you the support that you need for your system. That's, that's Sounds what like, we and, and, and when we went through it in detail, it's a really, it's a really well-designed product, product end to end. So Thank I'm going, <laughs> no, it's like, it is your product. Uh, so, if I move away a little bit from the product and then I'm moving to the customer and the mindset of the customer, um, what is it? What do you do to convince customers? Because there have, like you said at the beginning, there has to be a change in consciousness. If I am not thinking about solar energy and, and uh, sustainability and like saving the planet and making a difference, why should I spend money in putting this thing in my roof? <laughs> So there has to be a mindset change in customers yes. in each of us so that then we say like, yeah, I want to invest 
in in a solution like this. I think that's yes. very important. So what's oh, your, it's it's I was, what's your I'm approach? smiling because I'm smiling because it's like welcome to our day to day. You know, convincing uh, convincing yeah. customers or answering exactly those questions. When I think there's a, a few good uh, good things that are helping, and and again, will will sort of help in this transition. First of all, um, because we are obviously a startup, we needed to we wanted to scale up to have the uh, the scale to continue to improve our technology to eventually bring it to to many many more places. Uh, and so we started in countries like like Mexico, where um, the just the unit economics makes so much sense right it's 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 good for the environment but it's it's it does not require you know a uh, a uh, uh, basically a uh, uh, an investment uh, that it is like you know with uncertain returns it, there's no drawback really it's it's a no brainer as we would call it your payback uh, of this investment is 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 3 to 4 years on average and then you have 20 years of free electricity like if you think of how much you save and we give obviously this analysis to the customer, the moment the customer uses our app, the, the, the proposal automatically says over the next 25 years, you're going to save X thousand, hundreds of thousands uh, of pesos or, or dollar equivalent. That's big. That's impact. Yes, that is so interesting because as you were talking, I was like, it sounds like rah, 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 rah. Yeah, you're not convincing me if I if I'm not into sustainable energy. And then I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Basically <laughs> your solution, what is telling us as consumers is not only it's good for the environment, but it's good for your pockets. Because then it may take you, I don't know, like you'll tell me better, but it will take you a few years to pay for the installation and the investment. But then for mm -hmm. the next 15 years, you have free electricity. That's because, it, yeah, uh, or 20 you years. Just or used two. The song. That's it. That's it. The sun is not charging us uh, yeah. yet. So, so that's exactly the, the logic. So usually once the customer sort of goes through that hump and downloads the app and gets that proposal, they're like, wow, okay. Because right. I mean, whether you can, you whether you have the savings and the money and say, I'll pay for it. I know I recover my money in three years. And then the good news, everyone's paying for uh, the good and bad news. <laughs> everyone's paying for electricity. So you have an expense already. So what we're saying is instead of just you know, paying for electricity, which again, in, in some countries comes mainly from fossil fuels, turn it into an investment. An investment, you can either invest fully upfront if you have the money or finance it. But at the end of the day, we can make the equation work so that you're uh, not spending more. Let's say you're financing it and paying your system monthly. You can pay what you're, you were paying before in electricity, but now you stop paying because your electricity is fully coming from the, from the sun. Um, and so the system pays on itself. You didn't invest up front at all. When the system uh, is done paying, you still have free electricity for another 20, 18 yeah. years because these systems the last 25 years at least. So it's, it is really a no brainer. Yes, um, I, have a, I, have a, I have a customer question for you. <laughs> like oh, sometimes yes. I put myself in like, well, that's my job. Right? Excellent. I do a lot of those type of like if I'm the customer questions. So basically you're telling me that with this panel in my roof, I can run my household and have the washing machine, the drying machine, the microwave, like the, the all the everything. computers, your everything. Netflix, um, everything. You're charging your everything you charge, everything, 100%. And how about winter? Well, so the system, I'll tell you how we actually design or, 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 or define the system for a house. And obviously there's cases, you know, if you're in an apartment building, you might have restrictions, right? But for a house, what we do is um, we look at your uh, consumption pattern and, and this is done through the app, through the, through the algorithm. So we look at your consumption pattern over the last uh, 12 months, uh, including your seasonal, you know, in, in as you know, depending in, in some places in winter, you, you, you use heating. Um, what's the source of your heating electricity in summer in a lot of hot places in Mexico and many others, there's a lot of air conditioning. So actually electricity goes up higher in the summer than in the winter because the winter is mild in Mexico and things, things like that. So we, all that to say, we look at the, at the pattern that gives us sort of your consumption in kilowatt hours. We then um, uh, size up your system to basically cover your whole uh, consumption needs. And when we, I say we size the system, there's data that says what's the radiation, um, you know, and, and how much a system will produce on average for the year, seasonally adjusted. So we know number of, obviously the sun 
doesn't, uh, the, sorry, the system doesn't produce electricity at night uh, and it produces less when, when it's a cloudy day than when it's a sunny day, et cetera. But all those patterns, um, you know, how long the day is in winter versus summer, et cetera, that's all parametricized. That's all in, our, in the formulas. So we know that a certain panel or a certain size of system with 10 panels, whatever the case might be, we know on average uh, how much it's going to produce per per season, per day, or per month, right? We, we do it per month, basically. Um, so we know that on January, my system will produce X number of kilowatt hours, this, this size of system I was talking about. In February, we'll produce X, et cetera. So we size up your system so that it addresses your consumption, your consumption needs. So, and as so long as obviously you have a big enough roof, we can cover 100% of your electricity. If you have you know, a roof that's half the size we need, well, we're tackling 50% of your electricity. The equation is still the same. You're going to invest half of the amount of money. Um, the return on investment is still percentage-wise the same. You're just going to invest half and get half the savings. But it's still a good, a good equation, a good investment. So that is fascinating. Because I, I, I don't think it about my well. electricity really, <laughs> but uh, it is fascinating. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not yet in Malaysia. I mean, otherwise, we'll be uh, knocking, um, at your, well, yeah. knocking at your door. I'd be sending you the app. Like, hey, Manu, yes. why haven't you quoted your system yet? Yeah, I'm sure uh, you'll be all over Asia and the world very soon. Um, so, because it is a really good product. So if I move away from that, I'm very curious to know your, your journey as an entrepreneur. And to like, of course, like there's always the, how did the idea came up? But then we've covered that a little mm -hmm. bit, but it's more, how did you meet your co-founders? Always curious to Good. understand well, that journey. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's uh, funny stories uh, to us, but the advantage of not being that, uh, that, that young uh, compared to other, other uh, founders, uh, the stereotypical guy coming out of, or a guy or gal coming from, from college or dropping out of college and, and making it, uh, it just happens less frequently than people think, but, but in any case. Um, yeah, so, I mean, uh, my main co-founder, uh, Juan, who is the one that, that had this idea originally, um, all the credit to him, he, uh, I met him in his previous life, our previous life, we actually uh, met, it's a funny story, we met at an event in, in, in a bar in Toulouse, France in 2006 in November. I remember exactly because it was the first uh, time I went to Toulouse and we were both in the aerospace industry and Toulouse is where Airbus is located. So it's a, the aerospace hub in, in France and in, in, in Europe. And so there was a big conference and supplier event and he was working for a Spanish aerospace company and he approached he approached me. I was uh, with uh, Bombardier. We had opened our manufacturing facility in Mexico and I was uh, looking to attract uh, suppliers and partners to co-locate with us and create an aerospace hub there. And, and they came on board. Um, and that's why he ended up moving to Mexico. And, uh, and sort of the rest is, uh, is history. He's been, he's been in Mexico and then he started in energy and he's been in energy for 10 years. And, and so that's how he got started and he had the idea. But we, we, we became obviously business acquaintances first and then, and then friends. And so I've known him since uh, yeah, 15 years. And that's, uh, that's how that connection came. My other uh, co-founder Zach I met him at our master's in London in LSE which uh, yeah. which we share that as well uh, that's our original uh, connection um, so you know great guy Canadian Canadian uh, guy as well who was uh, doing his master's in London but was living in Geneva a lot of experience lots of experience in multinationals as well he was in the oil and gas industry uh, before um, so I, I told him half joking at the beginning it's like I have uh, I have your your redemption uh, path here if you want to uh, join me and at the beginning it was just hey do you want to we were starting this with with my partner Juan right, yes. and we need your expertise as a finance guy. And so when he said, do you want to give us some, some help and, and some advice on the business plan and, and on the financials? And he just loved the idea. And he said, okay, I'm, I'm, okay. I want to join. Can, can I, uh, I'm all in. And so it's like, come on, come on, come along. And so that's, that's, that's how we started, but I've also known him for, for a few years and, uh, and yeah, and we have a great team. We complement each other very well. We've, uh, we've then brought in, uh, you know, our, our people leader, our HR leader, which I've known, I've known her for many years as well she's she's in mexico and she uh she uh she came from uh yeah working in a lot of industries in, in latin america and argentina brazil and 
and Mexico. Our operations leader, I also met her at Bombardier. Uh, her name is Sanji, and she came from as well, great, great experience, automotive and running big projects. And, 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 and she was, she loved the idea as well. Yeah. So, you know, we've set up a great, uh, great team. We great have team. great advisors as well. And, uh, and yeah, so it, it sort of started uh, organically started like that as an idea. Juan told me, uh, Juan told me the idea and I loved it. And, and so I said, no, I don't want to just, you know, give you advice. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. And then, I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm in. Uh, and so said, when do we start? And, and, and so that's how we started. So I guess, you know, we're, we're all late stage in, in our career, mid, mid yes. to late stage. Mature. But I wouldn't say late mature. stage. That's mature. a good word. But, um, you know, I fortunately, even though I've been in big companies all of my career, I've, uh, I've uh, been really fortunate to be able to have a bit, I think a bit like, like you to have the, the opportunity to start something up in, in these companies. So I had sort of the entrepreneur, um, uh, I guess yes. spirit and 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 experience, which is not common necessarily in big big companies. But I was able to when we started the Mexico project in 2006. It was the first time that Bombardier set up a, a facility in a new country. Bombardier had always grown through acquisition, and I started the whole supply chain activity down there. So uh, creating a supplier development team and and uh, and and creating an organization to deal with local suppliers, which we never had because Bombardier had the same suppliers from Canada and the U.S. for you know 20 years. And so yes. it was new. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, na, na, um, so you're saying basically you worked in corporate for a long time, but you were an entrepreneur and you started yeah. like huge projects, right? Huge projects from zero. Yes, which is amazing. I love, I love doing that. So it's like it's amazing. <laughs> and then basically you left corporate to start this company from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, you and I know, same as any entrepreneur starting something from scratch, we know it's not an easy ride. No, <laughs> it is complex. <laughs> and it is. I would say difficult. And sometimes it's emotionally difficult as well because there's many, many influences, right? Yes. Just to make the company successful and to keep it growing and keeping people happy. Like it is complex, especially in a regulated uh industry as well yes, you industry. Do whatever yes. with electricity Indeed. just like with banking so Indeed. in the corporate even though you had a lot of entrepreneur spirit you still had a lot of support from the company oh, teams and budgets and all that stuff you know start to put on Kappa. how did you manage your mindset what are the things that you've learned because that is key for success <laughs> yeah it, uh, yeah, it's it's a good good reflection, and that's exactly the um, the challenge. Like in a startup, you're really you're doing you're doing everything. I think you know, first of all, you have to be really really uh, passionate and, and committed to to the mission of what you're doing because it's it's yeah. it's rough at the beginning. Um, by you know the, the the nature of when you're starting something that doesn't exist, you need to engage everyone. You need to hire people. You need to get investors. You need customers. And at the beginning, you're an idea. You're a PowerPoint, right? You're a, you're a concept. And so you know you're gonna get for everyone that you engage and try to bring on board, whether it's investors, you're gonna get you know uh, nine. Nine no's for every one yes, or or uh, you know, or probably an actually higher percentage, you know, ninety five no's for every five yeses. So you know, it it can be a bit a bit rough at uh, at the beginning, but if you really believe in 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 what you're doing, um, and you say you know, and and you learn that that's normal, obviously in a in a startup, so you don't you don't take it as oh okay maybe my idea is no good, or it's you don't take it personal. You know, you take it as that's part of the journey, right? And and obviously it's not for everyone it's not 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 every customer is the right fit not every uh, not every corporate partner not every investor obviously is the the right fit or maybe you know they're investing more in the US Canada Mexico or Latin America or emerging markets is not their thing or or vice versa or so you know you just need to see it as as part of the journey and sort of anticipate that um yeah a lot more things are going to go wrong we've got a lot of you know pulling our hairs because there's an issue with with our first version of the app or it took longer to create the kind of product that we want wanted so it's you know it, it's it's uh it's, it hasn't been our first rodeo obviously on developing tech or or even in-house in i had uh, the fortune i honestly the fortunate experience of of being very involved in software development in aerospace which is obviously crazy crazy yeah, complex, complex and millions of line of code yes. and so i i i know 
sort of in that sense, I was I was uh, curado de espanto, as we say in Spanish. Like I've I've seen the the You've worst the and worst. so uh, the worst delays, and and so you know, I, I my expectations, I guess, were were tempered, and so uh -huh. you know, when we say three four month delay in in getting our apps released uh, relative to years of delays in aerospace programs, <laughs> it's uh you know it's not that bad, but obviously it's four months in the life of a startup. It's it's, it's a huge, lot. right? We've been That's operating for I'm a year, like, four so months is a lot. <laughs> so you need to find that balance between you know really driving um things because otherwise everything will just take longer and if you just accept sort of the the you know the the, the context and the limitations of the context you don't you don't get off ground so you need to really push and, and drive but you also need to you know uh adjust and be flexible and accept that some things will not go as planned. And, and that's why the famous pivot, as they call it in startups, where you, you thought you were going this way and you make a, uh, an adjustment in, in strategy, doesn't change your mission, doesn't change what you're ultimately uh, striving towards, but the way you're gonna get there, it's also you're taking a, a side road or a, or a, you know, a shortcut or, or a different, just a different road. Um, you know, that's, that's part of it. So I think it's, uh, it's, yeah, having a great team so that when you're having those bad days, you can, you know, you're all together and, and, and you're supporting each other yes. and being very, very committed to what you're doing, really believing in, in your idea. Um, that's why, you know, it's, it's not easy as you said, and, and yeah, nine out of 10 startups fail or, or more. I've heard 19 out of, out of 20 fail. Uh, I think fortunately you never, you, you never take anything for granted every day as, as uh, Jeff Bezos said, every day is kind of day one. Um, you still drive, um, obviously, for that success. But I think we're sort of over that that first hump, and we're having a lot of uh, traction. So we're very, very excited about what we're doing. That is amazing. Um, now that you say that, I agree. I totally agree with what you said. Like by the way, it's like mm -hmm. it's that mix of mindset. And now you're like, okay, we, we're past the first sprint of toughness. <laughs> You yes. build the company and now you're starting to be more of a scale up. You are starting to grow. You have like processes in place, investors, teams, all of that. You have like a working product. It's good. Mm -hmm. you're, you're growing. What is the change in your mindset moving from a super startup, early age, early stage startup to a more fast growing one? Um we're probably, I mean, I think we're still, we would still be considered early stage because we are sort of going into our uh, into our seed round. But we've, I think we've done yes, we've done a lot. Yes. We've done a lot in 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 our in our early stage. So I think you know we're we're in in, in strong footing. To your point, I do see that that sort of mindset uh, changing, and I reflect every day as I'm sort of walking or coming into the office or out. Like, uh, where do I need to spend more? more time and there's a there's a swing obviously you know uh, six months ago where we were just starting and doing a, a pilot and a proof of concept was spending more time with with investors earlier on now I spend more time with uh, with a team on our operational processes and how do we ready to to how do we get uh, more ready uh, to to scale up more and to and to ramp up um, I spend more time obviously on 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 recruiting because now we are we're almost doubling the the team size in the next few weeks and in next and so, um, yeah, I think it's 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 still that balance where you know uh, the founding team and, and and obviously the CEO and and everyone there is doing a bit of everything, but you need to start now being like okay, it's it's that beginning of okay now I need to really delegate. I need well. to let go. <laughs> I need it. to let go of this, and so you know it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's obviously easier said than done on, on many things, but you know at the beginning, obviously we were involved in everything, right from right where. Right from our contracts to how we how we prepare a proposal so that we can then automate that in our app but sort of even the graphics that we use and and the the Solfium uh, logo uh, obviously we got we got engaged some people but it was sort of our ideas right of yeah. of the the Solfium symphony by the way and playing with words of Solfium from the sol and and fume and 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 and, and sol, solfage or solfeo um, so, so there was a lot of playing of words, but like from the big, from even like the basic as our name, as our logo, right. We were involved to, to every single detail. And now, you know, we have a, we have a bigger team and we need to, yes. you need to, so let go it's, but it's delegate. a balance. It's a balance. Yes, yeah. it is. So as we're approaching towards wrapping up the conversation, what's your dream? Um, in, in this, in this context, because obviously I've, any dreams, including uh, thanks oh, yeah. for, for my family and my uh, and my uh, and my, uh, my uh, 
daughter and, and many things, but um, you know, I, 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 I do, I do, um, I do um, see us being a, a, a reference uh, platform, just like just like Uber is for ride hailing. Uh, but we don't need to be the biggest one in the in the world. To be honest, that's not really about that. This is an industry, fortunately, that's not a winner takes all. We're not trying to get someone out of the market. You know, everything adds. We have a whole planet to make sustainable. Yes. So you know. Our competitors, uh, I mean, some are technically competitors, others are more collaborators and partners, um, oh. and others are, and others are just, you know, I, 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 the world is so big, there's so much to do that, you know, I'm not, I'm not losing, losing my mind. We really, really focus on how do we do the, the best, um, what, how do we offer the best experience to consumers? Uh, and so I do see us kind of becoming a, a, a bigger multinational, being present in many countries and bringing our solution. And, and if it's not us and it's in a different country, it's someone else that had a similar idea uh, themselves, or they copied us because they, they heard this podcast and then they went into our website. And they say, "Hey, I'm going to do the same thing." By all means, right? It's a, it's a, it's it's a, it's a massive world. It's not a winner takes all. Um, you know, all these all our companies can be sustainable and and make a decent profit for for investors and have a huge impact on on society. I think I mentioned to you briefly. We had a great project uh, for a, a bakery co-op that employs uh, you know women in 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 in, uh, in precarious conditions and and people with disabilities. We were able to get an NGO to help us finance that, and we and we financed that so that we could put uh, panels for them at no cost. Uh, and and we want to do many many other projects like uh, like that and and we're yeah. in discussions with many partners there's a lot to do there's a whole world as i say yes, to make I more sustainable so um i see us being you know a big player in in that but it's not really about being number one or about you know uh winning it's it's we will all win so uh, you know we just want we just see a future where there will be panels in every roof just like there's TVs and refrigerators in almost every home, um, right? And, and and it became ubiquitous. Uh, even even low income homes are able to have a, a fridge or a yeah. TV. Um, you know, P, uh, solar solar energy has that same bright future. The challenge and what we're focusing on is 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 making that transition fast because we don't have five decades right to make this transition. We need to do it a lot a lot faster. So that's our our focus. And every company that jumps on board and brings a solution to to solar or the same solution that we do, by all means, let's uh, let's uh, sumar fuerzas as they say. In, in Mexico, which is a great expression, let's you know jo uh, join together and and make this yeah. make this happen. Yeah, I absolutely love it because it's it's like a, if I summarize it, what I take out of that, it's like the dream is just like to win win. There's like so absolutely. much to do. There's like so much impact that can absolutely. be done, and not only helps the planet but also helps like real people. The you know, like line, yeah. their economy and like everything. Oh, it's yeah. The last, the last quick, uh, quick anecdote on, on a couple of projects that we had done for small convenience stores, and these are micro businesses, family owned, um, right? That uh, that they they live there, even some of them in the second floor, and uh, we were able to get uh, so far a few projects done, and the savings that they get from solar now we got financing as well. Um, the savings that they're having now per month, uh, you know, it's 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 money that they're able to finally invest and grow more their business and maybe add a fridge and sell more products or have a bit of a wider selection or, you know, invest in putting something nicer and, and grow their business. This is extra money that they didn't have before. So these are, to, to your point, they're win-win-win. They're, they're, they're winning the planet. They're saving money. They're able to invest in their, in their business. Uh, in the case of the they bakery co-op, the lady told us, you know, this means I can immediately hire one one more person. I have money now to pay one more salary because of my savings on electricity. That that's one more you know person that now has a has a job that was maybe you know in a difficult condition before. It's impactful. We want to scale it up, but these 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 are win win win. So uh, that's what we're uh, that's what we're focusing on. Amazing. I love it. Cool. Good. <laughs> so where can we find you and find out more about Solfium and what you do? Perfect. So the easiest to, to remember, Will, is uh, solfium.com, obviously, but uh, but uh, I mean, obviously through through LinkedIn, we're, we're active. I'd, I'd love to connect with anyone that wants to, to share feedback, uh, you know, follow us and, and connect with uh, with us, with me. And and uh, yeah, Solfium, uh, sorry, uh, so, yeah, the website and, and our LinkedIn is, is the easiest one. We will be launching other social media, more, more specific in the markets that we're operating but you know 
generally uh, on a wider scale, LinkedIn and, and our website is, is the way to go. Amazing. I will add all of that in the notes in the, Great. In the podcast as well. Cool. Good. It's been an absolute pleasure. Same here. With you, it's Andre. been a great pleasure. Yes. Uh, put it's a an spot. amazing it's a great, conversation. Great, great way for me to start the day. I know it's the oh, end of the day for you in, in Malaysia, but uh, but I'm very uh, very pumped. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's do this. Let's get yeah. going. Amazing. All the very great. best. And Same everyone. To you. Thanks again for the invite. No, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the episode and speak with you next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.